While there will be a need for Wi-Fi in enterprise for some time, 5G provides for private wireless networks that take connectivity to a whole new level. Jane joins us now. Thank you for joining us live. Thank you for having me. Now, when we talk about these two competing yet complementary technologies, I suppose the real win on the private wireless network side is you've got the low latency and the high bandwidth. Actually, it's, it's a little bit more than that because it's also about the reliability. So what we need, for instance, for what you see behind you now, is not necessarily whether it is five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds in latency, but if we said that it's eight, it has to be eight. So this reliability for every single data transmission that we need to have has to be extremely reliable. And that is actually what drives most of our conversations around 5G these days when it comes to the private wireless networks. That's all about ensuring that the SLAs are met. Yes, exactly, and the fact that a lot of these machines, now you, we got a big red button behind us, right? If we press that one, of course, we need to make sure that the machine stops. If there's some health and safety, there has to be reliability around it. And the key part of being able to do this is that we can trust that not 80% of all packages get there, but 100% of the packages get there at the right time. So when we talk about what, where do we see 5G versus Wi-Fi, it's not for the 80% of the time where things are working, it's for the long tail of the packages. I cannot lose 20% and saying, oh, they might arrive 25 milliseconds later or 100 milliseconds, because by that time, either the machines have stopped because of safety or is not producing anything, right? So we have it. We have this whole uh, part when we talk about private wireless that the technology has to be, I wouldn't say reliable in a different way, but we definitely need to get to a more precise, constant move of everything we do. And you've got a partnership with manufacturers in Turkey on this front. Yes. So um, we basically, in the, on the overall manufacturing side, we are having the the scope of saying there's AGVs going, there is uh, robots in the manufacturing itself. How can we make the production lines in mobile in terms of saying if I want to change my production so that I can get to what in manufacturing is often called lot size of one. So how can I produce only one washing machine in this case in Turkey, right? For you, and you can have it pink if you want to, maybe Nokia Blue would be better. Um, but then have the right return on investment. And then when I then come afterwards and say, but my washing machine needs to be yellow or it needs to have a different spin or whatever, then the production line can adapt as quickly as possible to be able to do that. So for that one, we need to have this flexibility. And we do now see that with several manufacturers um, around this, that we can basically get to the part that we can provide AGVs connected, where we take the control system out, we do it for the production lines and the, uh, overall, so we can make digital twins, we can predict things, and we can be much more effective and agile in the production lanes. When you talk about digital twins, you're talking about how we're using 5G almost as building blocks. You can take different types of blocks, put them together, build new things. And one other key technology for that would be 5G network slicing. Yes, and, and you can say, they, in that sense, they're also two complementing part, right? Because what we do see with dedicated networks and, and these private ones will be, is often on-premise, because of security, privacy, where's my data, do I even want to know people, should they know if my production is stopped or not. Um, in the case of uh, airports, uh, ports where there's a lot of logistics involved, the warehousing, um, do you really need to send the data out or not? So there is this whole campus idea is very much there. But then when you come to use cases and slicing for 5G, we talked about slicing, I think the first time I was here talking about it was probably five or six years ago, right? Um, and it has a, a a similar role, but you can say it's built on a macro network, it's built on a much wider coverage, and you can do different things. So where we say private small campus networks is really for operational technology type of things, and then for the for the wide area networks where you can utilize and you have a different where is the services sitting and, and where do you where can you accept they're sitting? Often in, in slicing, the services that we provide are sitting in a core part of the network or even further away, and therefore the slicing will still give you an, an quality of service through the network, you'll still be able to do this, but it's basically two different use cases of addressing with, with the technology. So back to private networks, you're giving enterprise on a wide campus area the opportunity to control their environment completely. Absolutely, and you can say uh, the end game is, of course, that we would like to have the wireless wire, uh, now I'm sure that uh, there's some people out there say we're a little bit further away from that, but how can we make sure that we can then utilize the edge 
uh, cloud computing technology to move control systems out. And that is true for most of the operations that we talk about, whether it's in manufacturing or, as I said, it could be port, it could be cranes, it could be mining. It's, there's so many physical industries out there that is basically part of how can they digitalize and we need the technology to do that. Jane, thank you so much for your time. You are welcome. Anytime. We are live at Mobile World Congress 2022. I'm Michael Hainsworth.